Hey, hello and welcome to the channel. And this is the first of a four part series on brain tanning or tanning deer hides. Um, we'll be using mostly traditional methods, but I'll be talking some about more modern techniques. It makes this process a little easier if you've never done this before, or if you're maybe wanting to experiment and try it. We'll talk about going about fleshing the deer and we'll talk about it for part one. And by the way, all of the hides that I make use of are either hides that, that I've hunted legally or that I've obtained from uh, friends uh, who, uh, who harvested those deer and weren't going to do anything with the hide. And I don't believe in, in, in wasting, wasting a lot of the animal if possible. Plus the hides make some really nice buckskin. So in the first part of the series, we're going to be talking about the hide itself and, and fleshing that and some things you want to kind of think about and, and remember as you're doing that. As you're doing that. Uh, I'll be showing you some different tools, some of those more primitive and then some of those more modern. Part two, we'll talk mostly about uh, de-hairing and I'll be using what's called a dry scrape method when I de-hair the hide. However, there's wet scrape methods. You can pick up all sorts of interesting books on, on tanning, either online. Uh, I'll, su I'll suggest some books down in the description that I, I think are very, very uh, helpful and they have been for me. I also want to suggest that you take a look on some of the other channels on YouTube, people who do a lot of brain tanning, Ron, Ron Nails uh, series on, on how he does it. Those are some very, very excellent YouTubes. But hey, uh, I hope you'll, hope you'll like what we're doing here. Part three, we'll talk about softening the hide, which is, that's where a lot of the work comes in for most people. Softening is, is really just putting back into the hide a lot of those tannins that are important to keep it soft. We'll basically take you from a hide like this. This is a deer hide that's, that's been fleshed and it's had the hide, the, the hair removed. And now it's, it's nothing more than a crinkly hard piece of, of rawhide. There's a lot of use for these as well. People make use these to make drum heads. Um, I have friends who use these for uh, gourd banjo heads. So it's best not to let too much go to waste if possible. But what we want to end up with through our softening process is a really soft, flannel-like hide that you can then you can make into a buckskin coat if you'd like, uh, some pants, all sorts of, there's all sorts of clothes that you can make with buckskin. Part three will be talking about softening that hide, getting it to this point. Part four, lastly, what we'll do is talk about smoking the hide and smoking a hide. You don't have to smoke the hide, but uh, if you're going to be using the hide as, as clothing, and especially if, if you're into living history, uh, you'd like to go to rendezvous, at some point you're going to get wet, your clothes are going to get wet. If you've smoked your hide, you've smoked your buckskin, what you've done is, is you've put some resin into that hide. And many, many times when those, when those smoked hides get wet, uh, they're much easier <laughs> to, to soften back up again. You can let them dry. I've had friends who just throw them in the dryer. They won't get hard. They won't get hard like uh, like a car chamois after you've used it and you just kind of hang it up. It's gonna get real hard until you get it wet again. A smoked hide will loosen back up. So we'll talk about how I go about smoking hides. We'll also be talking about some of the, some of the important history that went into tanning and the tanning process itself. My period that I like portraying are the Western trappers that came out of St. Louis, early 1820s, went up into either up the Missouri River or down through the Colorado, down along the Santa Fe Trail, what would become the Santa Fe Trail when William Becknell would take the first wagon down there uh, and trap beaver. And of course, beaver was king in the 1820s and people still tan beaver hides today too. But a pelt such as this, might have been worth three or four dollars to a trapper and trappers would go out usually in the fall and into the spring to collect those beaver pelts flush those and, and dress those so that they'd fit them into almost 90 pound bales so there might be i don't know uh, several dozen or uh, sometimes near to 50 or 60 
beaver pelts in a bale and then they uh, they were shipping those back east because there was a big demand for beaver and mostly we're talking about the beaver felt right that's another video uh, but a lot of trappers would go out and they'd, they'd make uh, they'd make their fortune it's also a very dangerous business though another another hide that uh, people think about when uh, you're doing tanning is buffalo buffalo hide is of course the buffalo flourished in the early 19th century in the part of the world I am which is the plains there would have been several million and those buffalo supported many of those Indian tribes that's that's what helped them survive winter provided them uh, provided them hides when they would take the hair off of the buffalo hide, smoke those, and then use those to build their lodges, their teepees. All right, time to get started. Before we do, um, let's let's talk about safety. You're going to be working around some sharp objects, so be careful about that. Uh, the other thing to think about uh, is you're working with a, this is a really nice sized doe. I'm excited to kind of get started on it. Uh, this is actually one that my son uh, harvested this year. When I when I got it, like like most deer, even here in uh, Kansas in November, these things are full of ticks. I, I don't like ticks. I'm not a friend of ticks. So typically, what I like to do once I get the hide is I like to freeze it. And what I'll do is basically I'll fold it up with the flesh side in, kind of fold it up into a square. Uh, I put it in a couple of uh, garbage bags and I've got a freezer that's just dedicated to my deer hides. Once that, that hide has frozen pretty well, I'm pretty much assured that uh, so are the ticks. When we get to part two and we, we take a look at uh, scraping the hide, you'll, you'll get a chance to see just how many, just how many ticks there are often on a, on a deer hide. It's not that I don't want to be tough. Uh, I've often I've often taken hides right off the animal and I and I and I flushed them that way. But I I just prefer uh, to keep myself safe. Uh, I've had some tick bites. Uh, it's not fun. I've never never had Lyme's disease or anything like that. But just be careful. Be thinking about your health and remember, uh, you're not tough if you're dead. So. <laughs> Be careful on those things. Uh, so talk about the tools that I'm gonna be using today to flush this hide. Uh, there's lots of methods, lots of different ways, lots of different tools that you can make use of. Uh, Native tribes early on were just were using stone tools and bone. So one of the one of the tools I'm gonna to show you that I'm gonna use is an elk leg bone that a good friend of mine, Kevin Hebert, let me borrow to try out for this video. I've already, I've done it with a few hides already. I'm really impressed with how, how well this works. Another, another tool that was pretty common, and I'm gonna forget the name, but someone can put it in the comment for me. Uh, this is another tool that's made from an elk uh, leg bone. And you can look pretty closely, just kind of show you. You can see the teeth on this. And this is a scraper that's meant to be used this way, you see I'm holding it here. And if the hide is staked out on the ground, you can, you can rake that along there. And this, this really, really brings, pulls up all that dead, that flesh that you want. So that's another great tool. I don't know if I'll use it much with this hide, but perhaps in a later video, we'll, we'll talk about how we use those. And I do wear my glasses simply because I, I don't want to get anything into uh, my eyes from the from the hide. And yes, I do wear I do wear gloves. Uh, again, just just to kind of keep myself safe from anything. Well, time to get started. As I said, this is a really nice, really nice deer uh, doe hide that my son harvested. But we can't scrape any of the hair off. until we've taken this flesh off. 
see. From this height, this my, my son's my son's a pretty good shot with a bow. There's an entrance and an exit wound. But I think what I what I'm most impressed with my son is how he can skin out a deer. Because I don't know. I don't know of any other nicks or holes that he ever makes when he takes the hides off deer. So I love working, love working with the hides that he's harvested. The main tool I'm going to make use of today is what they call a parallel knife. This is about a this is about a 18 inch parallel knife. It's a Steinmeier knife. I don't know if he's really making many of these anymore, but I've got a link in the description to some other parallel knives that I think are, are really, really nice knives to work with. I like, I like an 18 inch or a little bit longer knife when I'm working with a deer because when I'm working up along the neck, as we'll see after a while, and I make use of that, that cutting side, it's easier for me to just draw that along on that hide if I need to thin that down a little bit. I like these, you can get, there's 12 inch size. Uh, an 18 is a really good size for most, for most hides you're gonna make use of. Where, what I like, where I like to start, I usually put the neck up near the top. There's lots of ways to do this, but I come down just about a third of the way down the, the neck of the animal. And this is where I like to start the fleshing. I've seen some guys really get after it because they're in a hurry and they like they want to they're trying to mass produce things. That that's fine. I'm not. I'm I'm doing this when I get time, and I want to make the hide nice. So I usually take my time fleshing. I just I want to make sure that what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of all the layers that I need to to get down to this white, as we'll see. So with these, these parallel knives, it's just so nice you can just, and I'm not applying a lot of pressure on this. I've let the hide thaw, so it's not frozen or anything. And when I get a section done, and I just start working down. Now I'm getting close to, you can see this here or not, but I'm getting close to this entry hole. I want to take that a little more carefully, and I'm just going to work around that. Don't want to open that hole up much more. All right, so I'm happy with that. Part of the key to, to fleshing the hide is making sure that you're, you're just not putting extra holes in it and you're getting off all the layers of that, that uh, flesh and that, uh, that fibrous muscle that's underneath there. So let's give our, let's give our primitive tool a bit of a try. I think we often think that uh, we're far more advanced than some of our forefathers and our ancestors. I'm not so sure. This worked pretty well. I'm applying a little more pressure than I would with a sharper parallel knife. The concept is the same. It's just allowing me to get down through all that, all that tissue. I 
and down to this surface here. So this is the uh, this is the exit wound. When I get the hair scraped off and before I tan that, I will probably just stitch that hole up. It won't even look like it's there. So you just want to keep moving around the hide and you'll see what you want to get down to is this it just looks like there's no fat there's no skin you can see that these layers are just you can see that white layer right here all that you've got to get off here so that's all just going to come off you can see it on the blade Some of that, some of that fat, a lot of these does have a lot of fat around their, their rump areas. Uh, some, sometimes I like to keep some of that fat. You can render that down and mix that with beeswax. It makes a really nice leather dressing. All right, so I've been on this hide 20, 25 minutes. Typically it takes me about a half an hour. Um, again, I'm, I'm not in a hurry. And it depends a lot on the hide. This is a, a, a nice size doe and we're getting ready to do the neck. So that'll be kind of the test for me, but uh, it's been pretty, pretty easy going so far. Just depending on the, on the animal, uh, if it's an older buck, sometimes that that hide is, is a little more challenging, especially up around the neck area. And what I've been doing is just kind of going around all the edges and making sure you get any of those pieces of flesh, some of that fat off of it. And then up around the neck here, sometimes with those big bucks, there's just there's so much, I mean, they're just really tough. <laughs> and uh, those hides will be sometimes half inch to three quarter inch thick up there at the neck. Fortunately, this one isn't that way, but one of the things that you can do, and I'll just, I'll kind of show you with this, but to thin that down some, if you want to on the flesh side, you're just gonna take your, your knife and just run it along. I thought I'd use the right side here. That'll, that'll be helpful. I'm gonna try not to cut the hide here. Cause this is a, this is a really sharp, this is a sharp edge, just business side. Oh, see, I did a little bit right there. My first and only hole. Ah, with those thicker hides, you, you want to thin that down. Cause that's hard. That's really hard to get softened then at some point, but we'll go ahead and finish this one up. And then it'll be ready to either just dry or I can get it, put it in rack or I can de-hair it. All right. Holding it by the rear end here. So this hide is now fleshed. We've got that down to where we want it. So if I get a hide drug through the dirt, pretty muddy and stuff like this, at this point, what I'll probably do is uh, I'll just throw it in the water and let it soak a couple of hours. Sometimes I even throw in a little Dawn uh, dish soap, kind of get it cleaned up. But because I'm gonna just take the hair off of this anyway, it's a really nice hide. I'll probably get this into a rack and let it dry and then we'll slip the hair or in the dry scrape method, we're gonna take a wahinki and we're gonna scrape that hair off. I'll see you in the next part. Thanks for watching. And if you've enjoyed what we've done so far, please hit subscribe below. I'd like to hear your comments. My channel is, is really just dedicated to doing and learning. So if there's things you want me to try <laughs> or uh, 
things you want to know more about, let me know. Maybe we'll do that in some upcoming videos. Thanks a lot. Thank you.